Do we need close friends? That's the topic that we're going to address today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager, and today I have a very esteemed and prolific guest on my show. Her name is Robin Jones Gunn, and she is an award-winning, best-selling author of over a hundred books. And she's here to talk about one of the themes of the books that she has just recently released, and it's about whether or not we need close friends. And authors do a lot of research on this, so I can't wait to dive in with you. Welcome, Robin, to the show. I am so glad that you're on Flourishment today. Thank you. I just felt really honored that you asked me. Thank you. As we continue diving into this topic of whether or not we need close friends, I want to key into something that you said in the first half of our conversation about being known. How do we feel known? What kind of relationships should we be cultivating so that we feel known? What does that look like? Because I think that is something that is a hunger and a yearning in each person. It's an innate human need to feel known by God and by others. What do we do to get started in that direction of developing those kinds of quality connections? You think of what? C.S. Lewis quote, and I'm not sure I have this correct, but it's something like um, friendships begins when um, the other person says, oh, you too? I thought I was the only one. And so it is that being known, that kind of uh, flow in a, in a relationship when you allow yourself to be more vulnerable or to be able to speak truth about what you're really going through or the things you've learned or what you really love. And in, it's kind of like a bank, the, the way it draws others to, oh, I, I've gone through that too, or I've wondered that too, or I, you know, had that same feeling. And we're really good about doing that online. Um, there's a whole industry on influencers saying, this is the best mascara. Everybody should try this, you know, and, oh, 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 I, I've been looking for new mascara, you know, so that there's this feeling of we're, we're kind of connecting on those kinds of levels of what our needs are. But wow, just as humans, just deep down, we have such emotional needs and spiritual needs that we can encourage each other and help each other if we're sharing on that level. So being known starts with really being vulnerable and, and saying, I, I want to say this is something I'm thinking about or that I, this is something I love or this is something I'm trying, something new. And then it, it opens the door for someone else to, to enter into that as well. So you're seeking common ground to connect with somebody else and then listening so that you can feel heard, right? That's very well summarized, yes, <laughs> thank you. So the next thing I wanna dive into on the friendship issue goes along with the theme of Tea with Elephants, your most recent of many, many novels and part of your Suitcase Sisters series. Did I get the name of that series right? Okay, so this is gonna deal with different cultures, right? The Suitcase Sisters series. When you look at different cultures, we talk about common ground, but there are some things that are different in a good way about other cultures. What did you find about the intimacy of friendships that was a valuable thing that we can all learn from when you were looking into other cultures and other places in the world? Well, I set the story for Tea with Elephants in Kenya. And the reason is because I went to Nairobi two different times. I have a sweet and wonderful friend who's from Nairobi. She and I met at a writer's conference in England many years ago, and we have just kept up our long distance relationship for many years. So when I was invited to speak at a conference in Nairobi, she said, oh, you have to come and stay longer and come, you know, we will go on a, a little adventure. So the first trip, she and I went after the conference and we stayed at this hotel at the top of a, of a tree 
uh, Mount Kenya, this treetop hotel, and you can go up on the top deck and look down on the watering hole where the animals come at twilight and they serve tea. And so we, we put on our scarves that acted like posh ladies and went up there. They served us with, with crystal or, or, you know, China teacups and saucers. And we looked down on the watering hole and said, this is the ultimate. We're having tea with elephants. And I, I knew, you know, in my writer's file of many ideas that that would be a fun book to write someday. So by having that friendship and, and, the years that I've known her as an African woman who has been up against many things that I, I will never experience and how God has worked in her life and the things she's accomplished. She's amazing. So it's the iron sharpening iron sort of a friendship that has been so rich. And then to be at her home because she's come to the U.S. and she's stayed with me in my home. But then to go to her home and, and see what her life is like, that kind of friendship just builds a deeper trust, a deeper understanding, a greater worldview. But the beautiful simplicity between women that we are all the same at heart, that we have a lot of the same feelings and thoughts and issues and that camaraderie, it makes the world much smaller. So to take these two characters, two American characters, two best friends, and send them off to Africa, I, I, I loved being able to put them in different situations, such as I had been in with my, my friend in, in Nairobi. And then the second visit I took to um, Kenya, we went on a safari, and there were um, five women all together, just from different parts of the world, different walks of life. And so for the five of us to be in this Jeep and experience the, the rawness of God's creation, just out with the giraffes and the hippos was just phenomenal. And I was able to pull that into the story as well of just seeing the world as so much grander and larger and God's plan is so much bigger than all we see when we're just stuck in our, you know, stuck with our phones, stuck in our homes, stuck in our circle of everybody's just like me. So I feel comfortable, you know, but you expand your, your horizons and your heart just kind of explodes with just this being amazed at, at, at God's creation. So that was, that was a fun part to add into the book because taking the characters out of the routine gave them that chance to really see so much that it changed them when they came home they were never the same so would you talk about the value that we really can see comparing our busyness the tyranny of the urgent so to speak with the value of shared experiences that deepen and strengthen our connections with other people. Talk about why those two things are often opposed to one another and how we need to make a priority of one over the other. Don't you love that tyranny of the urgent? That's just such a great line, you know? <laughs> and we all, we all experience that, that we are, we feel just captivated by what has to happen in our schedule or something and it becomes all really important and urgent right at the moment but to be able to stretch beyond that means that we are no longer in control <laughs> that's so hard for all of us we like to have everything all figured out and just right in place and have everything we need so when we are out of our comfort zone or out of control of, of circumstances, wow, doesn't that just tilt our heart to trust God more than we do when everything is just taken care of? So what is one last thing, one final most important thing that you want audience members to know about whether or not we need close friends? Need close friends so that 
we can become completely who God created us to be. Because his design is for us to be in community. We are a body. We are, we are connected to each other. And so when we step out of that comfortable isolation, the little cocoons that we can so easily make for ourselves, and we, we stretch out beyond, then we are truly becoming all that we were created to be. And it's, that's how we are to live. That's the fullness of life right there. Mm, this has been such a beautiful conversation and so much richness awaits everyone who's watching and listening to this podcast. I'm sure that they would love to experience more depth, more breadth of all of your wonderful words and messages and rich, rich writing. So how can people stay connected with you, Robin, and get a copy of Tea with Elephants or one of the many other hundred books that you have to offer? Well, just go to robingun.com, R-O-B-I-N-G-U-N-N.com. And, you know, for women who love to listen to podcasts, I co-host a podcast that's titled Women Worth Knowing. Cheryl Broderson and I just talk about women in history, contemporary women. I mean, every woman is a woman worth knowing. But we tell stories of ordinary women who trusted God and he did extraordinary things. So um, that's another way to get connected. Uh, reading the books, uh, listening to the audio books, uh, going with ebooks, or listening to the podcast, Women Worth Knowing. I hope that all of you listening were inspired and encouraged to deepen and strengthen your relationships with others and create those meaningful friendships that'll grow you, that'll help you to become, as Robin said, who God really intended for you to become as a person, as a believer. And of course, I also hope that you come back for the next episode of Flourishment. <music> <laughs>